Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me on this Wellness Wednesday webinar. Tonight's topic is one that is very near and dear to my heart. It is the topic of stress and how we can have success over that in a sensible way. I'm so glad that you have taken time out of your busy schedules um, to be with me tonight and talk to me about this topic. Please feel free to ask any questions in the chat box and I will answer them as quickly as I can. Um, there is a slight delay on this program, so um, it may take me a second to actually see your question. So, but rest assured, I will get to all questions by the end of, of the webinar. So let's get started. Let me first introduce myself a little bit. My name is Lindsay Phillips. I am a mama of two boys. I am a wellness warrior, a clean eater. I am a Star Diamond Beachbody coach and a certified holistic health coach. But most importantly, my biggest job is that of a wife um, to my best friend and a mom to two boys. I was basically sick and tired of being sick and tired. And the answers I was getting from regular doctors were not good enough for me. They were answers such as, oh, you're a new mom. Oh, your hormones are changing. Oh, you're getting older. You're a little bit depressed. Let me, let's give you this medication or that medication. You just need to get over it. Those were answers that I was not satisfied with. And so I started on a journey of healing myself, reclaiming my energy, fixing my digestion, and becoming confident in my own skin again. And now it is my passion to help others do the same. I graduated from the Institute of Integrative Nutrition and studied under the best of the best in the nutrition and wellness fields. I have studied every dietary theory in the book, from paleo, to veganism. While I believe in whole clean foods and appropriate supplementation, I believe in bioindividuality. What that basically means is that no one person is the same. There is no single way of eating that works for everyone. It's all about experimentation and most importantly listening to our body. I practice a holistic approach to health and wellness, which means that I don't just look, about what's, look at what's on your plate. I look at how all areas of our lives are connected. And my ultimate goal is to help you become the best version of you. So what to do first? Take a few deep breaths. Be present during this webinar. Get comfy and listen carefully. No multitasking, ladies. No cell phones, no TV. Close that email and no side conversations. Claim this time as you time. Time to learn, time to discover, time to become empowered about your own health and wellness. So what are we going to cover tonight? First, we're going to define stress. What does it mean? We're going to understand the stress response. We're going to look at how stress really affects our health and our weight. We're going to identify signs of stress overload and common sources of stress. And then we're going to figure out some tools for managing that stress and how we can change our stress response. And we're going to talk about when we know we need to get some additional help. So how is stress defined? Stress is a temporary condition where you perceive that the demands being placed on you are greater than your personal resources. Stress can be any physical, chemical, or emotional factor 
that causes bodily or mental unrest and that may be a factor in causing disease. Scientists and physicians use this term to denote any force that impairs the stability and balance of bodily functions. A normal physical response to events that make you feel threatened or upset your balance in some way. There is a purpose for stress and a need for it in the body. So what is the stress response? Stress response is oftentimes called the flight or fight response. The stress response is the body's way of protecting you in emergency situations. When the stress response is working as designed, it helps us to remain focused, energetic, and alert. The stress response also motivates you to meet challenges like studying for an exam or winning a race. However, it is no longer helpful and it affects your mood, health, productivity, relationships, and your quality of life. So let me tell you a little bit about how stress has impacted my life. My youngest son, Joshua, was born in 2009, a happy, healthy boy. However, when we began to introduce normal foods, we discovered that he had some serious health conditions. And they were health conditions that took us a long time to work out, to first diagnose, and then figure out the best treatment option for him. Extremely, extremely stressful time for me. It was a time where I wasn't sleeping, I wasn't eating, and when I did eat it was very poor choices. I wasn't exercising. I was worried about him and about his future. We were under an enormous amount of financial stress and I as a stay-at-home mom really took on his care for my for myself and it it was overwhelming I tried to put on my mom's superhero cape pretend like everything was okay juggle all these balls in the air and it ended up really affecting my health it put my thyroid in the, the trash can. I began suffering from adrenal fatigue. My skin suffered. My digestion suffered. My relationships suffered. And I couldn't be the mom and the wife that I needed to be. So I know firsthand how stress affects us and affects our health. Stress can and does affect our bodies, thoughts, sleep, feelings, and behavior. We know this, right? This is not new. According to WebMD, 75% to 90% of all doctor's office visits are for stress-related ailments and complaints. 43% of all adults suffer adverse health effects from stress. It can also affect us with pro such problems such as headaches, high blood pressure, heart problems, diabetes, skin conditions, asthma, arthritis, and certainly depression and anxiety. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration declared stress a hazard of the workplace, costing American industry more than $300 billion annually. The lifetime prevalence of an emotional disorder is more than 50% often due to chronic, untreated stress reactions. It affects our metabolism, our nutrient absorption, and our digestion. Like I told you, I couldn't lose weight. 
my skin suffered, my, my face did not have a healthy glow about it, and it certainly affected my digestive system. So let's talk about how it affects our weight, because I know that that's a, an issue with a lot of people. Can it affect our weight? The short answer is yes. So why? Why is that? Stress, fear, anxiety, anger, resentment, and negative self-talk cause the body to generate excessive amounts of the two hormones, cortisol and insulin. Excess cortisol and insulin have an unwanted effect on signaling the body to store weight, store fat, and stop building muscle. So when we are stressed, we change our ability to burn calories. The more we smile, learn to breathe, and enjoy life more, the more efficient our metabolism becomes. So in summary, the power of your mind has the power to dictate the weight of your body. During moments of stress or prolonged periods of stress like I had, the digestive system shuts down because all the energy needed to digest is being used to cope with the stress or stressor. If you eat during times of stress, which I know a lot of people do, they stress eat, your body literally and metabolically cannot receive the full nutritional value of your meal even if it is loaded with nutrients. So I see a lot of clients come to me and they say, Lindsay, I'm eating healthy. I'm eating salads and fruits and vegetables, and I'm eating clean, non-processed foods, but I'm just not able to lose the weight. And that's when we really begin to look at those other life factors, those stressful areas of their life. Because when we're stressed, it doesn't matter necessarily what we're eating. So like I said earlier, there is a purpose for stress in the body. It is our fight or flight response. And it is used to tell our bodies that we need to get out of a situation. But however, most of us are experiencing stress overload. So there are four different types of stress overload symptoms. And it's vital to be able to recognize when you are in stress overload so that you can prevent the symptoms from getting worse. So you have cognitive, emotional, physical, and behavioral. And we're going to break those down a little bit. Before I do, are there any questions so far? I know I've given you a lot of information, and the last thing I want to do is cause you stress during this webinar. So cognitive symptoms of stress overload, memory problems, inability to concentrate, poor judgment, seeing only the negative, anxiousness, racing thoughts, and constant worrying. So I ask you tonight, have any of you experienced any of these symptoms? For me, when I was going through my period of really heavy stress, okay, certainly as a mom of two, one with special needs, I still have moments of stress, but I've, no, I've figured out how to deal with those moments of stress. And I'm going to teach you those, those ways of dealing with it. But when I didn't have those coping mechanisms, I certainly was unable to concentrate. My memory certainly suffered. I felt like I was scatterbrained. I couldn't focus on one thought. And I felt like I wasn't able to get anything good done because my mind was racing and I was bouncing off of 
many different ideas and topics. I was anxious and worried about our future and my son's future and his health and whether or not I was doing the right things and how it was affecting my other son and my husband and so I certainly suffered from most of these symptoms. How about emotional symptoms? There's moodiness, irritability or short temper, inability to relax, feelings of overwhelm, feelings of loneliness or isolation, depression or general discontent. I remember having a very short temper with my other son and my husband. It's not something I'm proud of, but it certainly was there. I felt overwhelmed. I felt lonely and isolated that nobody understood what I was going through. I remember thinking the day my son graduated from feeding therapy. We were visiting a doctor about two hours away and we were visiting there once a week to undergo a couple hours of therapy, feeding therapy. And I remember the day that uh, it was a speech and language pathologist that you see for that. Um, and I remember the day she said, okay, Josh, you don't need to come back. You've graduated. And I just started bawling in the office. Just bawling. And she asked me, she said, are you happy? What's, are you worried about whether or not you can do it on your own? What, what are you going through? And I said to her, Krista was her name, she's fabulous. I said, Krista, there is nobody who understands what I have gone through other than you. Because she worked with him and me and she understood what we were going through. Not even my husband who wasn't able to see as much because he was working hard for his family. And I felt incredibly lonely and isolated. And she, I felt, was the only one who understood. I certainly was depressed and discontent with my life as it was. So let's talk physical symptoms. Because a lot of times I think we assume that stress is more emotional symptoms. But it certainly can affect us physically. We can have aches and pains, diarrhea or constipation, nausea and dizziness, chest pain and rapid heartbeat, low libido and frequent illness. I was sick all the time. I had a sinus infection all the time because stress really does affect our immune system. So it also affects our behaviors. We either eat too much or too little. I am a too little eater when, I stress, when I'm stressed out. I um, feel nauseous and I just don't want to eat. I know a lot of my clients are the other way and eat too much when they're stressed out. I sleep too little. Again, not too much. A lot of people I know also sleep too much when they're stressed. I sleep too little. I am one who lies in bed and my mind races, especially when I'm anxious or worried about something. And so I, um, I don't get enough sleep. A lot of us isolate ourselves. We procrastinate and neglect certain responsibilities. Some of us may abuse alcohol, cigarettes, or drugs to relax. Or many of us may have some nervous habits, nail biting, tapping, pacing. I'm a pacer. I will pace up and down. Um, I usually actually walk in a circle when I'm pacing, when I'm nervous about something. 
there are lots of common sources of stress. The top 10 are listed here, and I hope that most of you, many of you, are not suffering from most of these or, or don't have this source of stress in your life. Um, death, obviously, divorce, separations, um, major personal injury or illness. Marriage can be stressful. Um, some of us may be going through periods of unemployment, um, or retirement is often a very stressful time in people's life. But there are lots of other sources of stress, more common sources of stress. Stresses of work, of fear of failing, debt, having too much on our plate is a big one for women especially. Um, Overscheduling, how many of us are guilty of that? Chronic health issues, while it's a big cycle, so while stress contributes to those chronic health conditions, those chronic health conditions are a source of stress for us. Parenting is extremely stressful. The birth of a new child can be stressful, new pets, changing schools, feelings of not being good enough, and then the stresses that come with decision making, the fear of making the wrong decision. And I think it's important for many of us, especially who are parents, to remember is that all of us experience stress. I experience stress, your friends experience stress, your husband, your your siblings, your parents might be experiencing stress as their lives are changing. Your children experience sources of stress and it's important to recognize them and recognize how they're feeling and give them tools to adapt. So let's talk about my tools for managing stress. It's very simple. You remember the four A's to effective stress management. It's avoid, alter, adapt, and accept. Avoid, alter, adapt, and accept. Let's talk about avoid first. You want to avoid unnecessary stress. Now, I've been a stressor my whole life. My parents will tell you. But a lot of my stress was self put on. Not all stress can be avoided, but learning to say no is a good place to start. Distinguish between shoulds and musts on your to-do list and prioritize accordingly. accordingly. And steer clear of people and situations that stress you out, if you can. Sometimes we can avoid those people. But if you can, do your best. I remember when I was at my rock bottom, I knew something needed to change. And I sat down and I made a mission statement. I laid out what my priorities were. Most of them revolved around my boys and my husband. And I was doing a lot of stuff that was not necessary to fulfill, in my eyes, what my mission was. And that didn't line up with my priorities. In fact, a lot of it made my priorities suffer. And so I decided that I needed to get out of this hole and so I drafted this mission statement and I said that for one year every decision that came my way was going to be measured against my priorities and my mission statement. If it helped further my mission, it could stay. If it didn't, it had to go. There are a lot of really important tasks that you could be doing but they may not match up with your mission statement. They may not further it. And they may need to go for now. 
I like to think of my life in terms of seasons. And just because I say that I can't do something right now in this season doesn't mean I'm shutting the door forever. So I try and look at every decision and every opportunity and I measure it with the mission statement. And if it doesn't further it, it has to go for now. Sometimes we need to alter the situation when possible. It is not always easy to avoid a stressful situation, but sometimes they can be altered. Ask questions so you are prepared about the situation you are getting yourself into. How many of us agree to do something and then we get into it and it is way more work than we thought of, thought it was going to be? Ask questions before you go into it so that you are prepared and can make a decision that is fully informed. Sometimes it helps to bring along a supportive person just in case you need to vent or just need an ally when you are feeling uncomfortable. Be more assertive and make your needs known so that people are aware and may be willing to accommodate or compromise to make you more comfortable. I was juggling so many balls in the air and I didn't want to ask for help and I didn't want to let people know how much I was struggling. You need to let people know that. You need to be assertive, you need to be empowered, you need to be your own advocate. The third A is adapt. Adapt to the stressor. Like I said, we cannot change others. Sometimes we can't change the situation we find ourselves in. Sometimes we need to change ourselves for the shift in attitude to occur. A lot of what my stress came from was fear of the future with my son not knowing really the breadth of his health condition and it scared me for what his future might hold. I was stressed because the idea of what his future would look like scared me. I needed to adapt to that stressor. I needed to reframe that and realize what a blessing he is and that his future is exactly what, what it needs to be and what it is intended to be. So whenever possible reframe stressful situations and focus on the good and remember to focus on the big picture Try and get out of your little box and see the big picture and how others might see it. The last A is acceptance. Accept the things you cannot change. One of my favorite prayers. Accept that stress is a part of life. It will always be present in our lives and we have a choice about how we manage it. Strive to find the silver lining in every situation, even when it presents stress. Be reminded of the personal growth that stems from stressful situations. I focus on that one all the time. Had I not gone through that stressful situation, had I not gone through the health problems that resulted from that stressful situation, I wouldn't be where I am today. I wouldn't be I wouldn't have found my calling and my passion. I wouldn't have met such amazing people that I have in my life today. And I wouldn't have known how strong of a woman I am 
and how no matter what challenge is thrown my way, I can handle it. Learn that no one is perfect, including you. You can also manage your stress response more effectively by strengthening your physical health. So you want to be sure to regularly do the following. First, exercise. Physical activity plays a key role in reducing and preventing the effects of stress. Nothing beats aerobic exercise for releasing pent-up stress and tension. So back when my son was going through everything, I was up a lot in the middle of the night. And like many people do, I was watching infomercials because that's all that's on TV. And I decided I was going to, after watching an inf infomercial, order Insanity. And that's really where I discovered Beachbody and found Beachbody. I had done a Beachbody program before that, but this was really the one that pulled me in. There's something about 2 a.m. that you think that you can do a lot more that you, than you can. So I ordered Insanity, and it was the hardest thing I had ever done. But it helps me, and it helps me reduce my stress. We recently suffered the loss of my father-in-law, and I found myself in, a, in another funk. And insanity was not working for me. I don't know why it wasn't working for me like it had before, but it wasn't. And I wasn't enjoying it. It wasn't giving me that release. So I started doing Les Mills Combat. Let me tell you, if you're stressed out, combat is the workout for you. The punching, the kicking, <coughs> excuse me, is a great, great stress reliever, and I highly recommend it. The second thing you can do is eat a healthy diet. Well-nourished bodies are better prepared to cope with stress. You want to start your day with a healthy breakfast. You want to reduce your caffeine and sugar intake. You want to cut back on alcohol and nicotine and processed foods. And you want to get plenty of sleep. Feeling tired can increase stress by causing you to think irrationally. So you want to keep your cool by getting a good night's sleep. With practice, we can change our stress response. Mindfulness is a mental state achieved by focusing one's awareness on the present moment while calmly acknowledging and accepting one's feelings, thoughts, and bodily sensations. Okay, so you can acknowledge your feelings. Recognize that you're feeling depressed and anxious and worried. And then try and focus on the present moment. Breathe often. My kids will laugh and, and warn each other when I'm really stressed and they've driven me up the wall. I'll start doing some deep breathing. And Jake, my oldest, will say to the youngest, uh-oh, mama's breathing again. And they know that I have hit my stress response limit and I'm trying to change it. Yoga and meditation is an awesome way to change your stress response. You want to find ways to change your thoughts by using affirmations and I statements. You want to try and silence our inner critic and turn negative self-talk around. Focus on finding more realistic thoughts that make you feel better. Make a gratitude list. I try and think of three things that I'm most grateful for each day before I go to bed. Get a massage. Take a walk in nature. Gardening, if that is a stress reducer for, for you. I am not a gardener, and the thought of that stresses me out. Take a warm bath. Enjoy good nutrition. 
meditate. Focus on relaxing each part of your body. Do some journaling. That really helped me when I was stressed out. Was to just journal and express everything that I was feeling. Listen to calming, uplifting music. Worship music has gotten me through many a hard day. And sometimes I just crank it up and sing and dance at the top of my lungs. And I tell my son all the time that there, you cannot dance without a smile on your face. I still think it's impossible. So whenever we're in a bad mood in the house, we turn on some music and, and do a family dance party. You really want to focus on limiting stimulants such as caffeine. Do some hobbies. Painting is a great one that I know people are very interested in with all the um, new area stores or activities where you can go and paint with your friends. Stay social. Get a girl's night out. Engage in regular self-care. Mine is pedicures. I love getting a pedicure and I try and make sure that those are scheduled regularly. Because to me that really relaxes me and changes my stress response. Pay attention and tune in to your body. Try and stay away from toxic people. Get plenty of sleep and make sure you're setting aside relaxation time for yourself. So let's talk about some stress buster examples. So in this example we're going to use your job as a stressor. I know many of us suffer from a job that causes us stress. Even though it may be a job that we love, doesn't necessarily mean it's not stressful. So you want to ask yourself to bust through the stress. Is there anything you can do to make your current position less stressful? Is disorganization causing some stress? The bell went off for that one for me. When I am disorganized in my job, I am very stressed. Can you get additional resources in areas you are unfamiliar with? Sometimes some additional training might help you make decisions, might help you organize your thoughts better and therefore reduce the stress you're feeling. Can you delegate when you have too much to do? And while we're talking about job, being a stay-at-home mo mom in my book is a big job. And we can always delegate when we have too much to do. Can you change positions in the company? Okay, if you're a mom, you can't do that. But in some jobs you might be able to. Can you seek new employment? Again, as a mom you might be tempted to some nights. Sometimes you need in a normal job to get out of that situation. Sometimes it's just a toxic environment that you need to seek new employment. Would engaging in more self-care help the situation? Would starting a new hobby or volunteer work help? Sometimes those things outside of the workplace cause us stress in the workplace because we're not spending the time we need to on ourselves. Okay, so let's look at stress buster example number two. In this scenario, in this example, you are lacking energy and feel strongly that exercise will help revitalize you. You are feeling very stressed about not exercising but don't know where you'll fit it in. Like I said, I, I recently figured, uh, fell into a funk when the, my father-in-law passed away. And I wasn't, I had gotten out of my workout routine for obvious reasons. And I was exhausted. I felt tired. I didn't have energy. But it was such a cycle. I didn't have energy so I felt like I couldn't work out because I didn't have energy. 
but I knew I didn't have the energy because I wasn't working out. So I had to make sure that I was going to fit it in because I knew that it would ultimately help me get that energy back. So ask yourself, is there something you can delegate to someone else so you can make time for exercise? Is poor time management to blame? Okay, are you sitting in front of the TV when you could be working out while sitting in front of the TV? Are you on Facebook too much when you could be working out? Are you willing to wake earlier so you can exercise in the morning? That is what I do. I try and wake up and get my workout done because I know if I try and put it in later in the day, I'm not going to feel like it. And there are too many variables at that time of the day. Can you find an exercise partner to help motivate you? Do you have a support and accountability system? Can you exercise during your lunchtime? I have many clients who I'm amazed and, and in awe of them that they get it done during their lunch hour. Is it in your budget to purchase a quick 30-minute workout DVD? As a Beachbody coach, I have many to offer you, and I have the support and accountability groups that you might need. When I was starting out on my journey, I knew the gym was not going to work for me. It takes me 20 minutes to get to the nearest gym and 20 minutes back, plus I'd have to use their child care. And I can get a lot done in those 40 minutes. So for me, a home workout program was the solution. And it eliminated my excuses for not doing it. Our third example. In this example, you realize you are in serious debt and it's causing constant stress and insomnia. So many people are struggling with debt. And I think that's one of the biggest stressors that we have. Oops, sorry. So do you have a budget including all your monthly expenses? Do you have credit cards? And if yes, are you willing to contact the banks and negotiate to reduce your interest rates? Are you willing to work a part-time job to help you get ahead? Are you ready to reprioritize by changing your spending habits? Will you reduce eating out? Are you willing to seek help from a financial coach or debt consolidator if you cannot manage on your own? I think many of us have stress because we don't acknowledge the problem and we don't have a plan to get out of it. And just by having that plan, you automatically reduce your stress. So obviously stress can wreak havoc in your life if given the opportunity. That's why it's so important to know your stress limit. Since we are all different, our abilities to manage stress will differ from person to person. <coughs> Excuse me. Do your best not to compare yourself to others, especially if they tend to have a more relaxed personality. We all know those people who are just carefree and don't seem to worry about anything. I am not like that. We are all wired differently and have had different experiences that have led us to react as we do. That does not mean that we cannot change, but playing the comparison game will only cause self-loathing and disenchantment with oneself, and this will only add to our stress levels. The following are things that influence your stress tolerance level. Your support network. A strong network of supportive friends and family members can be helpful in combating stress. And on the flip side, the more lonely and isolated you are, the greater your vulnerability to stress. Your sense of control. 
Embrace the fact that we have little or no control over others and their actions. If you have more confidence that things will work out for the greater good, your stress levels will diminish greatly. If you feel like things are out of control, you're likely to have less tolerance for stress. I felt like things were out of control, and that was one of the biggest stressors for me, that lack of control. Be an optimist, because they can generally handle more stress. And optimistic people tend to embrace challenges and accept life on its terms. You're extremely vulnerable to stress if you don't know how to calm and soothe yourself when you're feeling sad, angry, or overwhelmed by a situation. The ability to bring your emotions into balance helps you bounce back from adversity and is a skill that can be learned at any age. Don't be afraid to ask questions. The more you know about a stressful situation, including how long it will last and what to expect, the easier it is to cope. For example, if you go to a doctor's appointment, call the office in advance to see if the doctor is on schedule or running behind schedule. If they are behind schedule, ask when you should come in to avoid a long wait time and a possible stressful situation. If you've tried all or a majority of the tools cited earlier, more help may be needed to identify the source of the stress. Sometimes it's important to seek professional help from a certified counselor or clergy member to continue dismantling the stress in your life so you can feel better and live a happier, more fulfilling and relaxed life. It's not just about you. The stress that you feel affects every relationship that you have, whether that be with a spouse, a parent, a child. It is important to get a grip on the stress, to learn to adapt, to alter, to accept, the stress so that you can be the person that you are intended to be for yourself and for those loved ones. Always be empowered and an advocate for yourself and that alone will help you reduce the stress because you will feel more in control of the situations around you. Again, I thank you for spending this time with me tonight. I hope it was helpful and informative. I am here to answer any questions. If you would like some additional support, I would love to set up a free strategy session with you. You can email me at lindsay, L-I-N-D-S-A-Y, at thebestversionofyou.com. And we can certainly schedule a time to chat and come up with a plan together because that's the first step. The first step is acknowledging the stress and coming up with a plan to tackle it. And I can help you do that. And by doing so, by reducing your stress, finding ba balance and joy in your life, becoming healthy and fit, those are all steps to becoming the best version of you which is my goal for you and for me. Again, my name is Lindsay Phillips of thebestversionofyou.com and I hope to talk to you soon. We will conclude this webinar and again, I'm here if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask.